This was the tiniest one yeah, I've ever seen this. in my life. Can you even believe how tiny those things are? On the camera, you will not understand. These things are dogs. It's crazy. Seven minutes left, so we are about to pull into Panderosa Mini Ranch. Now, this is where we got Poppy and Petunia. It's my turn to buy a couple, so I've been talking to Travis, the owner, for a while, trying to figure out timing, and I wanted two heifers, and I haven't gotten to see them in person, obviously, but I'm so excited. Five minutes away now. He said the ranch interest is on the east side. I don't know which way is east, though. <laughs> Did you say east or west? <laughs> Sorry, I had to have an outburst for just a second. <gasps> Look at them, they're, they're head button like Bobby and Petunia do. Look at all their runs. We need to take notice of how they have this set up yep. for when we build yep. one. Uh, I'm about to learn something. <laughs> You're about to learn something. Yep. <laughs> Look at them. Look how big that one's horns are. Oh uh, yeah, it's gonna be Poppy. That's gonna be Poppy. We're here at Panderosa Ranch, uh, Mini Ranch. Do you do you go by Mini Ranch all the time, or is it just? We're easy. You, yeah. yeah, Panderosa Ranch, whatever. Yeah. Yep. So tell, tell us a little bit how you started it. And... Well, so we I started out uh, working in fitting cattle across the country, working for my uncle, and that's where I learned about genetics and embryo transfer and how to come up with uh, really good confirmation cattle. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I graduated college, I said I'd never touch another cow again in my life. Yeah. And then I started raising miniature cattle about 10 years ago. We started it as kind of a joke, and then <laughs> it kind of grew, and uh, there was a lot of demand. We have a lot of fun doing it, and so yeah. that's really where it's come to today. That's so awesome. Our emphasis is really on just making really tiny, really cute, cute, hairy calves. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's awesome you have the background of, like, quality cattle, too. So, yeah, we put a huge emphasis on, like, confirmation and structurally correct and still being able to go out and do their job, which is calving, raising calves, and, mm -hmm. and not happening to worry about birthing ease and different right. types. So all of our cows calve unassisted out. Mm -hmm. um, we have pastures with timber, and that's where our cows live. So What's crazy to me is he treats these miniature cows like cows, and then they're like dogs at our yep, house. Yep, yep, yep. No, they, <laughs> so, I mean, they, they come in the barn, and, you know, when they're born, and they get treated pretty darn good but yeah. uh you know they're raised outside uh, just as any other cattle are. i know yep. that's just crazy i so. guess you know if we ever get to where we have some calves i don't think we'll ever get to the point where we have more little cows than our big cows but sure. you know my dad's like well why don't we just put poppy and out with like the regular mama cows i'm like no uh, <laughs> like they can't sure no <laughs> yeah no i get it uh as we sell to a lot of hobby people you know they they we don't want to send problems down the road that the, the truth is they're just set to be enjoyment and small yeah. acreage, so people yeah. really enjoy that. Do you want to show us around a little bit? Yeah, so if you want to come on in here, I've got a couple of babies that I believe you're going to be taking home with you. And uh, our barn's got three sections. One section's our cattle section. The middle is like a riding area and where my son will do like calf cuddling for clients that want to come pet cows. And then the far side is where we have our horses that uh, we have and use in the area. So this is the area where we keep oh them. Oh my gosh, y'all. And then these are two tinies. This little girl is just like a, <laughs> she's just about as small as they get. Oh, oh my gosh. You're like half the size of Wendy. So right now the names are between lemon and lavender Cricket and Junebug, or Clover and Clementine. He wants name. ham and cheese, and I said no. Ham and cheese, I get it. Well, whatever <laughs> works, you know. This I, was the tiniest yeah, one I've ever the, seen in my life. That's the smallest one that I think we've we have raised out here. So, <gasps> yep. No, I gotta give you Tintin too. Hello. Oh, oh my goodness. She was just right at 20 pounds and 17 inches when she was born. Oh. Oh my God, I don't have nothing. Nope, that's not <laughs> that's not what that's for. We'll breed Poppy and Petunia next December. Yep. There'll be two. Yep. And so we'll probably do two more. And yep. then after that, it'll probably be more like coming to y'all for breeding. Sure. Right now that you're breeding with, or are they all? I have young bulls over here that we're keeping, I can show you. A, a hungry bottle calf is a healthy bottle calf. So less is more. Gotcha. And a lot of times. Oh if you're having gosh. fun and you want to do it, you can, but it's, yeah. It, so Parents. she's out of a new bull that we call Fuego that we raised. Uh -huh. So she's one of his first calves. Now we're pretty excited about him because he's been throwing really, really, really tiny. little stuff. And now this year he's going to get his whole herd. Are they both Fuego? Uh, she is a Dan and Dan's been really good for us. <laughs> I 
probably did it incorrectly by getting micro heifers. Because no. usually you want to get the mid-sized heifers and breed the micro. Oops, sorry. A micro bull, right? I, I would tell you that on good genetics, that's not accurate. Where okay. you get into trouble is people with small pelvic sizes. There's a misconception that a micro can't calve, and that's because there's poor genetics with small pelvic sizes. But a lot of these cows, even our shortest, are still really wide. So calving Popping ease, petunia are wide. Exactly, and that's where that's Very where wide. it really matters. You can and like when em. you guys palpate them to breed them, <laughs> yeah. they'll be like, wow, they have a big service, they have a big track, you know? So calving ease is not, we just don't fear it. I mean, right. they're short-legged, but they're not. especially now that y'all have like proven bulls that are showing to have teeny sure. bite babies. And that might be the first baby. You yeah, know? And, and our goal is oh to continue gosh. to get them smaller and smaller. There's a stampede, but yeah. <laughs> So how old is he now? He's probably a few months old by now. Oh, he's a few months old? Yeah, he's, get up, Blazy. Come here, buddy. Hi, honey. Oh, look how hairy he is. Is he pulled? Or is he's he gonna, horned. He's horned? Yep. Hi, honey. So he's one that we've used a lot for like the calf cuddling. My son takes him yeah. around and. Hi, honey. So are these all bulls? Uh, there's a few heifers in here as well. Because I was wondering, my little red heifer has pretty big horns already. And yeah. how old are they? Uh, just a year. Okay, because Rowdy's two, right? Okay. Yep. So this so guy's a two-year-old. So her horns could get huge. Uh -huh. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yep, yep. So they'll get big horns. Because, and I think a lot of people don't know that you can't breed a micro with a micro. Correct. Right? You can, but you'll have 25% dead loss, mm. and there's no advantage to it. So no. Some people think that they're going to get smaller cattle. That's a bad misconception, and that's inaccurate. Right. Oh, my gosh. You're so fat. So this is a Pan Lander, which is like their own trademarked breed. You see this white around their belly. Can you show me your face instead of licking? Hello. Hello. That's Rowdy. Oh, my gosh. This one's name is Rowdy. You are so cool. Look at him. That's what Petunia is going to look like in about a year. Okay, y'all, we are about to load up our new babies. Still don't have names. They're two little heifers. We're going to put them in the trailer and head to Tennessee. So let's go. I literally can't even. This is what's making it okay that he's going to New Mexico for a week. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that makes sense. I just stay home and play with the babies. Elk hunting? Yeah. Yep. Hi, honeys. Well, foaling season starts for us in January through April. Okay, so I'll get her on there. Be live action. Yes. Awesome. But well, thank y'all so thank much. Thank you. Appreciate nice it. You. Thank nice you. To meet nice you. to meet you. You as well. Well, yeah. Have yeah. Yeah. Oh, safe my. travels. <laughs> nice. Well, I'll let you know when we get home. Can you even believe how tiny those things are? I right. you you will on the camera you will not understand. Okay, these things are dogs. It's crazy. I think that might be the tiniest cow I've ever seen in my entire life. These poor girls are so hungry. We kept stopping and checking on them and they were eating our legs and our fingers. And so they need a bottle and they need to go to bed. Poor girls. They've been in the truck for like nine hours. Tomorrow, we're gonna be moving the hay manger into their stall and they'll get to go outside. But for tonight, they get some hay and a little water and we're gonna give them a bottle. <laughs> Honeys, looky here. This is your palace. It's your palace. It's your palace. Let me go get your bottles. Okay, so both of them. So we'll do we'll do two bottles then. So no milk replacer, just the bottles. Oh my goodness, hello. Who wants your food? You are the hungry one. You are the hungriest of the hungry. 
You are the hungriest of the hungry. So this is just, this isn't milk replacer yet. This is like a calf, like a electrolytes, keeps them hydrated kind of deal. They'll get this today. Oh my goodness. They are so thirsty. This little one was so mad every time we stopped and we did not have food to offer her. That one. <laughs> oh my God. This is going to be the Poppy of the year. Poppy was the chugger last year and Petunia took forever. And then she would try to go drink Petunias. Abigail, have you ever bottle fed a baby calf? I have not. It's pretty fun. And that's it, girlfriend. <laughs> that's it, girlfriend. I'm so sorry. Oh, look at her face. You're so hungry, girl. I know. It's okay. It's okay. I get hungry too at night. It's okay. Okay, you can do that for a minute. They said, we're hungry. You'll have a bottle again in the morning. I'll be here at 7 a.m., I promise. <laughs> They're so upset. They're so upset. They get very uh, used to schedule, and we did not follow it today. They were, they've been hungry since 5, and it's 9.30. Poor babies. But we don't want to feed them too much because you might be like, feed them more. That'll get their tummies all upset. A calf will eat until it's sick. You have to tell it no, unfortunately. Mamas will tell them no. Like you'll watch a mama cow walk off when her baby's had enough. And we don't want them getting scours, which is like diarrhea. And then they get really dehydrated and sick and it's a whole thing. So unfortunately, as much as I want to keep giving them food because they look so hungry, we can't. Look at her over here. She's like, I'm gonna eat your leg. I'm gonna eat your leg. All right, y'all. That's it for this video. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more to come of these two. We still need name suggestions. We're kind of in between like lemon and lavender, uh, cricket and June bug or clover and clementine. I'm willing to like mix and match. I don't know. So let me know if you have any ideas, if you like any of those names and stay tuned because this is gonna be fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs>